Thank you, Rachel. Beautiful. Uh, the Lord of the Dance, uh, who calls us today to uh, know that the uh, giver of all good things, God Almighty, calls us to the dance of life. And today I'm going to ask you, shall we gather at the river? Okay, let's sing about it. It's our first hymn today, Shall We Gather at the River? Yes, we do gather today and know that God is with us at the river, in the desert, on the mountains, in the valleys. Wherever we are, the good Lord is with us. And now sign with me, if you will. I am a child of God. I am loved by God. And I'm not alone. <laughs> and welcome to worship this morning. Special welcome to our guests and uh, visitors. If you're a first time guest, Please pick up a guest bag, the red bag in the back, for your information. And we welcome those streaming and listening in, like Palmer and John and Laverne and Joyce, and all those that worship with us through the uh, medium of phone and the internet. Our opening prayer is printed before us. I'll read the light if you will read the bold. Oh Lord, I cry to you for help. Good morning. Let my mouth be full of your praise. And your glory all the day long. Every day will I bless you. And praise your name forever and ever. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation. O hold all the ends of the earth and the seas that are far away. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is You redeem my life from the grave. And you are on me with mercy and steadfast love. Lord, hear my prayer. And let my cries come before you. Our hymn of praise, what a friend.
Do we have any, oh, I don't even ask to, I don't even have to ask, come on up. Good morning. Can you say good morning? Thank you. Come on down. Watch your step. Now, are you kids happy today? Yes, I'm happy. Are you guys happy? Yes. Yeah. Are we always happy, though? Sometimes we get sad, don't we? When we get hurt, when somebody says something mean, I, I, I get sad. Or if someone we love leaves us or dies, we get sad, right? But the good news is God says he'll turn our sadness into joy. The Bible says we can cry for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Or St. Paul, even writing from prison, waiting for his own death, says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice when? Always. Yeah, because we know deep down God brings that joy back and wants us to be happy with the light and love of Jesus, who puts the joy in our heart for all time. So help me with this song to remember that, because it's one that you got to use your hands, your feet, and your voice. It goes like this. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, then your life will really show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, lift your hands. If you're happy and you know it, shout amen. amen. If you're happy and you know it, then your life will really show it. If you're happy and you know it, lift your hands and shout amen. amen. Very good. You guys are helping out there. Okay, th this is the tricky one now. If you're happy and you know it, do all four. Amen. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, do all four. Amen. Amen. 
If you're happy and you know it, then your life will really show it. If you're happy and you know it, do all four. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, God, that you turn our sadness into joy, that Jesus is the joy in our hearts forever. Bless these children now and all your children around the world to know the joy and happiness that comes in you. And all God's kids said, Amen. bless you as you go off to Sunday school. And thanks to Linda Bergen for reading the good word today. Good morning. The first reading today is from Exodus 24, verses 12 through 18. The Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and wait there, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant, Joshua, and Moses went up to the mountain of God. To the elders he had said, Wait here for us until we come to you again, for Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, he called Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. Today's psalm is Psalm 2, which we will read responsively. Why are the nations in an uproar? Why do the peoples mutter empty threats? Why do the kings of the earth rise up and revolt, and the princes plot together against the Lord and against the Lord's anointed? Let us break their yoke, they say. Let us cast off their bonds from us. God, whose throne is in heaven, is laughing. The Lord holds them in derision. Then in wrath, God speaks to them, and in rage fills them with terror. As for me, I have anointed my king upon Zion, my holy mountain. Let me announce the decree of the Lord, who said to me, You are my son, this day have I begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall crush them with an iron rod, and shatter them like a piece of pottery, and now, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Submit to the Lord with fear, and with trembling bow in worship. Lest the Lord be angry, and you perish in a sudden blaze of wrath. Happy are all who take refuge in God. Today's second reading is Second Peter Chapter 1, verses 16 through 21. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand this, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation because no prophecy ever came by human will, but men and women moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. <laughs>
The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Matthew 17, verses 1 through 9. Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It's time for Name That Tune. (laughs) And the uh, winner today will get a uh, paid meatball dinner. (laughs) That's coming up Tuesday, uh, 4.30. You drive up, pick it up, tell them Pastor Guy paid for it for you. Now, if if 100 of you show up, we know there's liars in the group. (laughs) So yeah, uh, meatball dinner in Norway, it's called shitkaka. Yeah, it didn't, shitkaka, I'm going, cake, you know, kaka's cake, but I don't want to talk about the other word, but <laughs> it's cake meat, I guess is what they say. Renee and I found a place called Ikea, or Ikea, some call it, a Swedish department store, a wonderful store, and you could go there in Oslo and get a shitkaka meal for 70 kroner which is $10, which in Norway at that time, that was a real deal because you could spend $50, $60 U.S. dollars at a restaurant. So we're charging $10 Tuesday, just like they do at Ikea. So come on out Tuesday for the dinner. So this song is, uh, it could be my own testimony, maybe yours. Um, The artist is Chris Christopherson. Some of you know it. You can sing along. Why me, Lord? What have I ever done To deserve even one Of the pleasures I've known? Tell me, Lord, What could I ever do That is worth loving you For the kindness you've shown Lord help me Jesus I've wasted it so help me Jesus I know what I am Now that I know That I've needed you So help me Jesus My soul's in your hand Tell me, Lord, if there is some way that I can repay what I've taken from you. Maybe, Lord, I can help someone else what I've gone through myself on my way back to you. Lord, help me, Jesus, I've wasted it, so help me, Jesus, I know what I am. Now that I know 
that I've needed you so help me Jesus my soul's in your hand Jesus my soul's in your hand How many can relate to that song? Yeah, it sounds like Christian Belief 101. Turning to Jesus for our, our he healing, our forgiveness, our grace. Let's pray. Lord, help us every day to turn to you for life, for health, for healing, for the greatest gift of all, your love. In your name we pray. Amen. So the disciples had been with Jesus for at least a couple of years, as far as we know, like Peter, James, and John. Uh, disciples means they were, they were learning from the, the rabbi, the teacher, uh, from his words, from his deeds, from his prayers, from his encouragement. But as we read the Gospels, like a lot of us, they didn't learn too quick. They would stumble and fumble, and, and you know how that goes. And so when Jesus takes him up to the mountain, and he's, he's transfigured is the word, but he's, he's dazzling white. The glory's all around him like Moses in the mountain, like Elijah in the mountain. And he tells him, don't tell anybody about this. We wonder why, because they didn't quite get it yet. And they probably wouldn't get it until after Jesus' death and resurrection. Their whole idea of the Messiah or the Christ would be something different than what it turned out to be for Jesus. Although Peter did say, when Jesus asked him, who do you say that I am? Peter said, you are the Messiah. You are the Christ. And then Jesus looks at him with love in his eyes and says, flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you. It's by God's Spirit, which is true for any of us. It's only by God's Spirit that we can say yes to Jesus and get up and follow him. And so he says, don't tell anybody about this until after my death and resurrection. And they probably really didn't want to hear that, his death. The resurrection, of course. We all like to celebrate Easter. But you can't have Easter without Good Friday, the suffering of our Lord. And there was Moses and Elijah. Think about what these guys represent. We heard about Moses this morning from the Exodus reading. The lawgiver, God gave him that tablet of stone with ten commandments, like not having other gods, like not taking the Lord's name in vain like remembering the Sabbath and keeping it holy. Whew. These are tough commandments. Honoring your parents, not killing, not committing adultery, not stealing. Well, the people just couldn't quite keep them. They were too hard to keep. And we know for ourselves they can be burdensome, these commandments of God. That's why prophets like Elijah came along when the nation was turning to other gods, when they were disobeying God's commandments and said, you better shape up or God's judgment's coming, which it did. We hear about it in the psalm reading today, God's wrath, God's judgment. God can be angry just like we can be angry. And God's judgment is always to turn us back to God, not to drive us completely away, but to turn us back. And, of course, judgment has come. Came through famines and plagues, floods, fire and brimstone, invasion of enemy countries so that the people would get the message, God wants you to turn back. So God's commandments, God's judgment can sometimes be almost too much to bear for any of us who are humans. 
In fact, it can drive us to despair. Like a young Martin Luther, who tried to please God with fasting, with prayer, with works of charity, with giving up sex or marriage. But the harder he tried, the further he fell into despair. In fact, records show he was ready to end it all for his own disappointment and not keeping the law and for the fear of God's judgment. But then came that holy moment, which we hope comes for all of us. When he was reading the book of Romans and writing a commentary on it, Luther, Luther says it was as if the heavens were open and the glory of God shone on him when he read that the righteous shall live by faith, not through any works, not through any ladder we have to climb, but God loves us just the way we are, and all he does is call us to trust in him for his grace, for his love. And, of course, faith produces good works. We know that. When, we're no, when, when we know we're loved by God unconditionally, like a mama bear that will never let go of her cubs, then we do the good things. We don't do the good things to earn God's love. It's a gift. It's called grace. For by grace we are saved, Paul writes, not through any works that any of us can boast. That's the good news. And then God from the heavens says to the disciples, says to us today, listen to him. He's talking about Jesus. On any given day, I've been told, we might have thousands of messages go through our brain, either by memory or TV, radio, whatever, a neighbor. How many of those come from Jesus, I have to ask you? I hope a lot. But if not, we have to be intentional about listening to Jesus who says, I am the way and the truth and the life, the way to everlasting life the truth about all truths, the everlasting life for all of us in Christ. I am the resurrection and the life, Jesus says. Whoever believes in me, even when you die, yet shall you live. And of course, Jesus says, I am with you always to the end of the age. I will never leave you nor forsake you. What a beautiful promise. What words to listen to today. So God help us on this day to hear your voice through your word, to share in your presence in the fellowship of believers. And as we join in the communion, to hear those words again, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sin and for everlasting life. Amen. What are we going to sing, Rachel? There it is. Come thou fount of every blessing.
Let's join together in professing our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, and Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. Amen. Let us join together now in prayer for God's people and the church for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, we are in awestruck today over the gift of your revelation from the dawn of creation. You've been trying to get our attention through the gift of the prophets, your commandments, and most clearly through the coming of your son, Jesus Christ, who is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets, who graces us day by day with mercy and love. Help us to follow in our Lord's footsteps and to be fishers of men and women for the sake of the gospel and the church. Lord, in your mercy. Forgive us, Lord, for our disbelief, for turning away from you and turning to other gods, for breaking your commandments, and thank you that by your death and resurrection, you forgive us and promise us the gift of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. We pause this day, O Lord, to remember departed family and friends who have left this earthly life and now dwell with you. Keep us in union with them here through faith toward you that in the hereafter we may be rejoined with them to look upon your face in glory everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, be with those we know to be ill and hospitalized, those facing and recovering from surgeries or undergoing treatments, those who are ill at home. We pray for Randall Bowers recovering from surgery, Pastor Bob Berg recovering from surgery. We continue to pray for Vicki Anderson, for Sandy Kirshner, Donna Lindbaum, Carl Dietrich, and others we name before you in our prayers. Lord, in your mercy. As we prepare for the gift of the Holy Communion, we thank you that you join us with the Holy Catholic Christian Church around the globe. And we pray daily that we would remember those that are in need today, especially the hungry and the poor, those living with violence and strife and war, the sick and the dying, the homeless and the refugee, and that you would use us to reach out to all people with your love and be with all the peacemakers today who stand in harm's way for the sake of justice and peace. In your name we pray. Amen. At this time, we'll receive our offerings unto the Lord. The noisy buckets go to help our youth and family ministries.
Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you've first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us in the world, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took the bread and gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. And when you pray, pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome to the Lord's table today where you can stand or kneel, receive the elements of the communion. There's gluten-free wafers in the center of the bread tray. There's wine or grape juice in the center of the wine tray. You could put your empty cups in the baskets when you depart. Please be seated. Communion stewards, please come forward.
Let us pray. We thank you, almighty God, for this healing gift of life, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to forgive us and heal us, to strengthen us and keep us in your grace, and at the last, bring us to everlasting life. Lord, bless us and keep us. Make your face shine on us and be gracious to us. Lord, look upon us with favor and give us your peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Following worship, you're invited downstairs for some treats by the Thiesfelds. They have some good treats, coffee, milk, uh, goodies, uh, adult Bible study in the office wing following worship. The uh, meatball dinners posted, I mentioned that. Uh, proceeds from that will help the local food shelf and the weekend backpack program. So uh, good, good causes for that. And again, 4.30 till the, till the dinners are gone. A couple of other announcements. Uh, Ash Wednesday, next Wednesday, uh, we have services here at 2 o'clock, which will be a combined service with New Scandinavia Lutheran and the United Methodist Church and then the evening service, 6.30, uh, Shatek Lutheran service. Then following Wednesday nights, we resume soup suppers with our confirmands and families helping serve soup and or whatever meal they come up with, followed by 6.30 worship. Um, it's that time of year when the Pregnancy Help Center in Rice Lake uh, helps their ministry with these baby bottles. If you'd want to pick one up, put your change in there, and it helps... Uh, with their ministry of bringing compassion, hope, and healing to individuals and families facing unplanned pregnancies. Picture directories are here, right, Sandy? And then if you didn't get one, you could pick it up in the back. New members, you'll have to uh, check at the office. I think we got some spare ones for, for the new members, too. Luther Park uh, is in transition. As many of you know, Keith Newman and Wendy and Marissa moved to Minnesota. Good place to move, right, Scott? Yeah. Although we, we hated to see him go. So they have an interim director who I spoke with last week, and their maintenance director, Dave Dobbs, is retiring this spring. So they need a new maintenance full-time director. It's a paid job. If you or somebody you know would be interested, contact Luther Park. They also need weekend host to host retreats, that's also a paid position part-time. So if you're interested or know somebody, call Luther Park on that. I think that's it for announcements, except we got to get the kids in here. Thanks to Bob and Teresa for getting us on the World Wide Web today. Let's hear the tempo, Rachel.
let's hear it for the praise band. Go and let your light shine.